Welcome to worship with Lakeside Presbyterian Church. Those of you who are here in the sanctuary, those of you who are online, uh, know this isn't the beginning of Advent, it's the beginning of Holy Week, no matter what it looks like outside. So our children and choir are going to be processing with palms, so I encourage those of you who need to find your spot um, to please do so, and I ask that you remain seated as we sing this processional hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. <laughs> Listen to the gospel account of what we just sang and somewhat witnessed. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, 
Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets saying, tell your daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us sing together all glory, laud, and honor, and if you're able to stand, please do so. before the one whom we praise, bringing our honest confessions unto God. So let us join together in silent prayer.
Oh Lord, you heard our lips of praise and now you have heard our hearts going to you in our confession. Thank you for hearing all that we offer to you and extending your grace and love to us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please join me in, in our response of assurance of God's grace and love. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes with abundant grace and endless love. Blessed is the one who does for us what we do for ourselves. We are forgiven and renewed. Amen. Let us sing our, our Lenten response. Love, love, love. Other, mother, father, sister, brother, everybody sing and shout, cause that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. I invite you to take this time to share the peace of Christ with one another, respecting that some people want to shake hands and others don't. Those of you at home, may the peace of Christ be with you. Okay, everybody, this wonderful conversation can continue at the potluck afterwards. Um, boys and girls, I'm not inviting you up quite yet because I'm going to read a scripture passage first. But if you have your fish banks, you can get it ready when I invite you up. Our next scripture is from Psalm 18. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festal processions with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. So now, boys and girls, if you want to come forward,
if you have your, your fish banks, you can bring those. That's okay. You can bring. Let's. Can we put them in front of the palm branches? And before you sit down, did you look at the picture? What is it? Yeah, a donkey. It's the same thing I read about. Bless you. Yes. Jesus is on the donkey. And the people are waving palm branches like you did. And some people are putting coats, cloaks down. All right. So now we can sit down, all right? You might have to help me back up again, but I'll make it down, okay? So this is the beginning of Holy Week. We read about it. We, we did it too. We're celebrating that Jesus came and... You know, everybody was saying Hosanna. That means save us. Some were saying you're a king. So does a king usually ride on a donkey? No. What does a king often ride on? Nothing. Nothing? King walks? Uh, it just sits there. Just sits there? <laughs> Maybe rides on something fancy, a big horse or a fancy car or something like that. You know, a king... But Jesus is a different kind of king, right? Yeah, Jesus, he's the, king that saves. he's the king that saves us. And he helps people. So he's, he's humble, like we're supposed to be. What? King of love. King of love. Exactly. Oh, you guys are wonderful. <clears throat> Things that we can remember. He's the king of love. The king that saves us. Thank you so much. So... And thank you for bringing your fish um, banks. Uh, adults, maybe today, will have offering envelopes, and we're going to dedicate that to help other people. Just like we're following our king, Jesus, aren't we? Because he helped other people. So can we pray together? And can we ask everybody this time to pray with us? Please sure. Pray with us. This time it's okay that you pray with us. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. He is the King of love, the King that saves us. May we praise him always. Amen. Thank you so much. Now the choir is going to sing a special song, so you can sit back down, listen to the choir. I think so, after the choir. As Jesus was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out.
it in the air. If the people don't shout, the rocks will cry. Oh yes, the rocks will cry out. Rocks keep silent. Jesus comes to set me free. Rocks keep silent. I'm gonna shout in victory. Rocks keep silent. Jesus reigns in majesty. Ain't no rock gonna shout. Rocks keep silent. Ain't no rock gonna shout. We're going to affirm our faith with our next uh, passage of scripture for this Sunday, taken from Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He found himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess to the glory of God, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Well, just kind of like this morning, we heard back, it was quite a festive time, the hosannas. People shouting the Messiah, the king, waving the palm branches, placing down coats, you know, acknowledging that, yes, this man from Nazareth is more than a man. He is the king. But I don't think it was quite a real party for Jesus. You know, he saw those loving faces. He heard their cries of acceptance. You know, that Hosanna, save us. You're the blessed one. But he knew. He knew the voices of the people were going to change. He knew as he went into Jerusalem that the cross was before him. And knowing that the cross was before him, Jesus still entered Jerusalem. He accepted those current um, cries of the people. He accepted the love. And he did that out of love for them, out of love for you and I. He entered Jerusalem, Jesus did, to answer the cries of Hosanna, save us. He knew what he had to do to save us. I don't know if the crowd knew that 
they would have that sense that they were going to turn, you know, completely 180. I don't know if they comprehended they would do that so quickly. Just like sometimes maybe in life we make a turn and we don't think we're going to do that. But even though Jesus knew that was going to happen, he knew that suffering and pain, the rejection, the betrayal, the death that was before him, and he still entered the city with love, with love for the people, with love for you and I. And when he was there in the city, he stayed true to his ministry and his mission. He stayed true to being that king of love. He taught and he healed. He loved people. He did not hide who he is. He, his love kept showing through in all that he did, in all the ways that he treated people. With this parade that had happened of the palms and the hosannas, maybe Jesus was announcing, telling the authorities, now is the time for you to deal with me. I am fulfilling my mission. So we've entered the sanctuary today. Some of you, yes, with some palm branches, waving those, but we've, we've entered because we love our Lord. Or we're searching, we're searching for that love. So we're here, and our Lord is here with us. We have come to worship him. Our Lord wants to strengthen our faith so that we don't stop the praises. We don't stop things like waving the palm branches or the shouts of Hosanna. That our faith and our praise can continue when we leave the security of this sanctuary. Because days may become difficult. Like it was for the crowd. Not in the same way, you know, the crowd dealing with the government. But days can become confusing for us to keep following God's way. You know, Sometimes when we want what we think we need isn't happening. It may be at times a challenge for us to stand up for our Lord, just like it was for his disciples then. It was really hard for them to stand up against the crowd and say, no, he is our Lord, he is our king. You know, don't crucify him. So people and things at times can entice us and encourage us to go on a different way instead of following our Lord. You know, go ahead, do your own thing. Whatever you want is okay. You know, you don't have to worry about anybody else. Is that the way of our Lord? You know, we're reminded of our Lord's great love for us as he entered Jerusalem. And we are challenged today, not just to enter Holy Week, but to enter into a new and a renewed relationship with Christ and all of Christ's people. So that a few things for you to think about, some questions or thought for reflection as we begin this Holy Week. How? How does Jesus enter your life? Maybe in unexpected or expected ways or both. But do you have some places that might be shut off? Places in your lives where you're kind of saying, oh, you know, I'm going to keep you away, Lord, from entering that area. Because you might want me to make some changes. So do you, in a sense, put up a do not enter sign? Maybe you have put up in your bedroom, or you did in the past, you know, make that homemade sign to keep your siblings out. Do not enter. And do we think we've got an area where we want our Lord to 
do not enter because that's my space, my life. But do we need our Lord to enter? And as our Lord has entered our lives, how does Jesus enter this world through us? May we be open. May we open ourselves to our Lord. And it might be in a new way as we worship and we reflect on all that he has done for us. May we always be willing to ask the Lord to enter our lives, even if it's times of joy or pain, times of grief in our relationships, in the decisions that we make, in our work, in our play, but how we live in this world, how we relate to other people, to their needs and to what is going on. Our Lord can enter that and use us to reach out to them. For when our Lord enters these times with us, you know, it's times with great love. So friends, we need not be afraid to give our lives to the one who gave his life for us and enter into a loving relationship with our Savior and Lord so that we too can follow that king of love and share that love with all others. What a wondrous love it is. And let us sing of that love what wondrous love is this? Hymn number 85. If you're able, please stand as we sing.
seated. Today we are dedicating the one great hour of sharing offering, and uh, that includes the fish banks. Uh, you may have gotten an envelope in your newsletter. There's special envelopes in the, in the pew racks. Uh, if you are prepared to give today, we will still take those in the, within the next few weeks. As you can see, the self there's three different areas that this offering goes to. The self-development of people, helping people uh, to be able to uh, learn a trade and, and um, make their money for their families themselves. The Presbyterian Hunger Program, feeding those around the world, and the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, which um, has been very busy lately, helping in many disasters. Uh, so before we have our offering, let us pray. Oh God, we are grateful that we're part of a, a denomination that looks at your people throughout the world. And this is a very special offering, one great hour of sharing. We thank you for the many ways that people are helped so that they can grow and they can provide for themselves and their families, that people are fed and that people are given hope during a time of chaos from disaster. So bless our gifts that we offer and these wonderful ministries. Bless the gifts that we give of ourselves and our ties for this community of faith, Lakeside Presbyterian Church. May we continue to bless you, our King of love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now receive our offering. Please remain seated as we sing our praise to God. Microphones uh, ready for if there's any joys or concerns that you would like to share in prayer. Um, I just see that there are a few faces we haven't seen for a while, so it's great to see uh, people being able to be back in the sanctuary. Um, I know a family that has 
two family members in the hospital right now. So uh, I'd just like to pray for that family. Are there uh, other joys or concerns? Pat, Cindy, down here in the front. Um, I'd like you to, um, I'd like to have prayers for my brother, Rick, who grew up in this church, and his wife, Patty. They've both had health issues that they've been dealing with this past year. And uh, one of the things, particularly my, my sister-in-law, Patty, who is suffering with Parkinson's, and they're trying to get some new ways to help her with pain. So I would appreciate your, pair, your prayers. Thank you. Are there others? Good morning. I wasn't going to get up and tell you about this. I hope I can make it through. Um, Friday night, I got a call from my daughter in Denver, and she said, Mom, you have to pray. Pray right now. I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? Mariah, who is her daughter, they, and Nicholas, and they have a new little boy named Balakai, and they live in Coyle, Oklahoma, in a farm area which was just made into housing. And there were fires all around them. And she said, the fires are coming towards Mariah's house. And um, pray that the wind will go north and will go away from them. And it did. The next morning, I got on the phone and called and said, we prayed last night. I let all the other daughters know. And the wind did change over the night. And the, it went away from their house. So they, even though they had packed everything up, ready to leave and lose their home, they made it, and the Lord was right there with them. I know that. Thank you. And of course, we know there's many communities that weren't as fortunate that, that from tornadoes. We need to pray. Many states were involved. Any others? Let us come before God in prayer. God, it's a, it's a joy to gather together to worship you. And even if it's on the computer, on the phone, online, we are still connected as your people. And we're not sure if it, it's a joy that will most likely break the record for the snowiest winter in Duluth. Um, but we're grateful for those who help clear sidewalks and driveways, roads again and again. We thank you for um, last weekend, the, the family bowling time and the baked potato bar, continue to bless the ministry of the young people. And we rejoice that we have um, many with us again who've been away for a while. But Lord, there, there are concerns to lift up to you. There's another school shooting, families in the communities of Nashville. We pray for them, Lord. There's so many questions. There's so much healing that needs to happen. And Lord, the communities that were almost completely lost in recent storms, an enormous number of tornadoes in many states this past week. Devastating losses, Lord. Bring hope out of that chaos. We rejoice that um, a prayer helped the winds to change and fires did not reach. A, the Swanstrom's granddaughter's home and her family is safe. We are grateful. We thank you. There's also things like trail, train derailments that would happen relatively close, displacement of people and cleanup. <clears throat> Lord, there's a family that has two members right now that went into the hospital yesterday. It's a difficult time, so provide them with peace and direction during this overwhelming time. We pray especially for Rick and, and Hattie with their health issues and that um, 
The doctors can find a way to deal with Hattie's pain. Bless him that pain, Lord. There are so many we know who are dealing with health concerns. Enter into this time with them of difficulty and, and bring healing, O oh Lord. Enter into our lives as the body of Christ. May we give witness to your great love. Yes, for this holy week, but your message of love and hope is what we are called to share every day. Bless our special times of worship this week and all that we do as your disciples. Now together we pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Right On, Right On in Majesty. If you're able, please stand. before the benediction that it's a potluck uh, Sunday, so downstairs in the fellowship hall. Thursday is Monday Thursday. Our worship will begin at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. If you have a special cross, a painting, an image of Jesus that you would like to share, we want to decorate the fellowship hall with those items. Then we will process up to the sanctuary for the ten of praise section of that worship service. Good Friday, the sanctuary will be open with a bulletin that you can use for a time of personal prayer, reflection. Easter Sunday, nine o'clock is a breakfast by the Christian Education Committee. 9.30 is a different kind of egg hunt, Easter bingo with, I believe, eggs for the kids and worship will be at 10.30. So now go with God, walking faithfully into somewhat the darkness of this holy week. Go with God, sharing the pain of our wounded world. Go with God, putting on the mind of Christ as you meet one another. Go with our loving God. Amen. I encourage you to sit, stand, line, and enjoy Alexander's postlude.
Sheila smack you in your palm, chewing mine. 